Rick's Corner, the man, the myth, the legend, now on with the show. Welcome to Rick's Corner. I have a guest today who I've seen around for many, 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 many years in the Muscle Magazines, long before he even knew I knew him. I knew him. His name is Richard Baldwin. He's won titles for like Mr. USA, right? Many other titles that you have, a best arms you said? Best arms in the USA, and I've won all the, local, uh, the state stuff like Mr. Texas, Mr. Florida, then regional right. stuff like Mr. Southern States, Mr. Southeast USA, all that sort of stuff. Yeah. When you won best arms, was it both arms or just one? <laughs> best in both. Okay. So, uh, you're how old now? 71. Oh my God. <laughs> Senior discounts. Yes. Yeah. In fact, I just retired. Well, I'll never retire. Yeah. But, I just uh, retired last August. Uh, yeah. What were you doing? I was a professor for uh, 25 years. And what you, you professed? What you profess? Well, I was a, they had me as a history professor, but because I had two masters and a PhD, yeah. they had me teach a classical philosophy course, a uh, mythology course, an honors mythology course, and uh, introduction to religion and religion in America. Oh my God, that's a so, lot of stuff. Yeah. Well, since you have a, uh, you did history. Today's show is going to be about the history of you and bodybuilding. Okay. How does that work <laughs> itself out? So let's just go back about few pages and when you started training how old were you about 15 and what is what is what inspired you to want to pick up a weight because it's not fun I saw a picture of John Grimmick and his yeah. strength and health when I was on a vacation he was, he had, he was doing wrist roller yes and I said oh my god that's what I want to apply to you want the wrist roller <laughs> I actually made one no, I just went arms like that no I made one of those those yeah. things work pretty well yeah. then they came with a machine that did it you know yeah. Well, I know the picture you're talking. I know what, exactly what you're talking about. But there wasn't really any really good information on how to work out back then. No, there wasn't. You know, it was basic stuff. You know, bench yeah. press, deadlift, yeah. squats, curls, triceps. But I will admit that it worked. Yeah, I got an old Sears. You know, the old Sears plastic coated thing. Sure. And just sort of made up stuff myself in the basement and just yeah. you know, I mean, at Christmas, my parents would say, "Hey, it's time to open presents." You know. So I was like crazy. Then I saw a Gordon Scotland's Tarzan movie. So oh, yeah, I, I actually I had an autograph picture of him somewhere. Yeah, I still do. I think I threw yeah. it out, but I, I didn't have it. Um, what did you? How did you figure out a routine back then? Since there was no just reading magazines. Yeah. And then when I started going to contests, I would talk to Boyer Co. or talk to whoever mm -hmm. and see what they were doing. Mm -hmm. and, Basically, you know, who's the magazines, basically. Um, Boyer's been here. He's a really nice guy. Oh, yeah. Um, back then, and I've said this on the show, the routines were normally work everything three days a week. That's what I did up until the time right before Mr. Texas and I started to split routine. Did you? Yeah. You did the whole body three days a week? Yeah. It's hard. Oh, yeah. That's so hard to do. It doesn't have to be being so long, too many hours. Yeah, it can take up your whole day. Yeah. And then if you were doing that, how many sets per body part was it? I was basically sticking to three sets of ten. Freeze that was the old, yeah. Yeah, that, well, that works out then. Yeah. Because you're hitting a lot of sets. With well, two them. exercises, wow. three sets of ten. Yeah, okay, yeah. that makes sense. And then you switch to a split. Yeah. How many days a week? Six. Oh, yeah. That's the best. Yeah. Actually, four is not bad. Yeah, I tried that some. I tried that, too. I did it with Bill Grant for a while. I actually yeah. made good results. Taking Wednesday and Saturday and Sunday off. And then I thought, well, I'm here at the gym. i got nothing to do. I might as well go work out. So you go in and you hit a couple of exercises that you hadn't done during the week, you know? Um... Did you know you were going to take it to the level of actually competing? You know, not really. I mean, I was just interested in looking good for some reason. You know, I, yeah. I, I got into that Greek ideal, and I, you know, I wanted to look like a Greek god or something. I don't know. Yeah. How, you know, that's who knows right. why people no, get No, 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 that's all right. So I was like my junior, or maybe it's my senior in, in college, I gained 40 pounds of muscle in college just by eating right and, and, work, and starting to work out better. And then... I was in the dorm and some, I had a magazine and some guys came in and said, you look as good as that guy at a magazine. I said, really? So I, was, I sent off for an entry blank and as soon as I graduated, I entered Mr. South Texas and I won it. And then oh I got hugged for 10 years. What'd you, what'd you weigh? Did you put 40 pounds on? I, I was only, only weighed 135 when I when oh. started college. So I went, I, 135 so when I got out. You were pretty small. Yeah. You had to actually do laps in the shower just to get better. <laughs> yeah. You know, I think we all been there. Because I remember in high school, I got down to like, 147 eating orange juice bars at lunch every day because I didn't want to be fat. So I thought I'd just watch my dad. Then I joined the YMCA, and of course, back in the YMCA's day, the weights were horrible. I mean, everything was broken, and, and, and but it worked. It still yeah, worked. Yeah, that's where I was training at it. the YMCA. Yeah, it's not like it is today. Much of them, they're much nicer yeah, today. Yeah. So after you won your contest and you got you got 
you got a, a plan lined up for your diet, mm -hmm. right? What's your diet consist of? Well, Grimmick told me, I went, when I was a junior in college, I went up to Pennsylvania mm -hmm. and worked in Harrisburg so I could go to York. And I'd go there all the time and just sit there waiting for Grimmick to come down in front of his office and watch him work out. Yeah. Then I'd get in conversations with him. And he just basically said, kid, stay away from sugar, flour, and salt, and you'll be fine. That was it, huh? Yeah, that was it. Big, and it pers worked. big personality. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's really funny. That oh, he was funny. He, he would tell me jokes. He could do he would do imitations of people. Even Einstein. He told me about when he met Einstein. Yeah. Uh, when he was, you know, he used to be a model. Yeah. And he was in Princeton, and, and when Einstein was, and and it was, he was fascinating. Yeah, I, I never met him. I wish I had him. I still have my original York barbell sweatshirt. Oh wow, cool. I bought it in nineteen. <laughs> I want to say fifty eight. It's burgundy with white lettering. I think it was when you were four years old, right? Yeah, I think it's the flock lettering where it kind of has like a feel to it. Uh -huh. Then I cut the sleeves off, and it's still I have it in my in my hanger in there. It's in good shape. I saved it all these years. Well, I save everything. I mean, it's like ridiculous what I have saved <laughs> over the years. But now it, it, to bring it all forward and share it with people is fun because they never saw this stuff from years ago. A lot yeah. of people don't know what that is. So that was kind of cool. So then you started competing, and you how often did you do a show? I did uh, a couple a year, yeah. and then like in 75, I entered four, and I won all four, including mm -hmm. the Collegiate USA and mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Region Four, Mr. Uh, Sunshine State, I forget what else I won, but then, oh, Mr. Southeast USA. Okay. And then they, you know, everybody kept saying, why don't you enter a national contest? And then the next year, I was the first time I entered America, and I came in fourth, and then, you know, decided, maybe I should start doing this. Yeah, I mean. But I was still just, still, it wasn't like I was, I wasn't like Samir or Frank, where that's their goal in life is to be yeah. uh, Mr. Olympia. Mine was just, hey, I'm having fun, I'm gonna do it. Well, of course, and you had a career. Yeah. So they kind of go together, though. You can do both. Yeah, everybody, you can make time for anything if you really want to do it. Yeah. But you did look great. I mean, you still look great. Well, nice. How, what'd you do about your eating? How did you uh, change your diet around? Well, you know, I lucked out in college because the uh, in the I was the guy in the caf girls cafeteria that checked off their numbers as they came in rough job right my best friend was back there mm -hmm. washing dishes and he'd come out and give me dirty looks but anyway the lady that ran the place liked me and saw that I wasn't eating certain things she said whatever you want to eat let me know so that started me out well uh, being able to uh, manage my macronutrients right away yeah that, that helped me gain that weight yeah and then Boyer got me on the low carb diet right I don't know much about macronutrients people ask me about that and the only macro I know is the macro lens on my camera. <laughs> I mean, seriously, I don't know what that really means. All I know is you watch your carbs and you increase yeah. your protein and you you increase your fats, and that's what we did back then because there was no cardio or anything, and it worked. Yeah. And basically, this is what I do today too. I mean, I just had lunch. I had a bacon cheeseburger, and I ate only a part of the bread and a side of cottage cheese. Yeah. So I mean, I could have had a hamburger, had eggs, and cottage cheese. This didn't sound good to me after being sick. By the way, you guys, if I sound like really sexy, it's because I've got this chest cold. <laughs> I think I'm going to keep the voice because it's really cool. <laughs> so, um, actually, I like it. But the, the diet, um, I'm sure that throughout the year you stay on it all the time. Yeah. There's no. I, I never eat anything with sugar in it. No. And I don't like breads. It goes straight to my gut, you. So I just say, eh. Well, I don't like sourdough bread if they bring me a basket at dinner. I mean, it's only on a Saturday night. Desserts, nah, not really anymore. Maybe a little ice cream once in a while, but my daughter claims that ice cream doesn't make you fat because it melts. <laughs> it melts right around your waist. But um, even when you go out, you know, you can go out, and I eat out a lot because I live alone here, so I know how to order fast foods that they're okay. Yeah. You know, you can go anywhere and get a chicken breast and veggies. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, nowadays, I eat out all the time. Yeah, and it's not a big deal, or eggs and, and oatmeal and, and the burger patty. It's not difficult at all. And I don't really count anything. I just go like this. And if I feel like I'm starting to gain something, then I drop the carbs. Well, I do this. I always go to the women <laughs> in the gym. Does my ass look fat in these jeans, honey? <laughs> but um, no, you can look in the mirror. You don't have to go by the scale. What do you yeah. weigh now, though? I have no idea. Hmm. 120? So, somewhere. Uh, 120? <laughs> somewhere in the 180s, I think. <coughs> Every once in a while, I'll get on. And if I, if I weigh more than that, I diet some. If I weigh less than that, I'll eat more protein and watch and a few more carbs. Yeah. I, I train a little harder. Yeah, or I stay around 220, maybe 222, yeah. 221. But I haven't weighed myself in three weeks because I'm afraid to. Because, as Doug knows, when I had pneumonia congestive heart failure, I gained like 30 pounds of fluids. So they said, weigh yourself every day and get those fluids out, and I lost like 30 pounds. Okay, fine. But since I've had this thing and I'm holding a little bit of water in my leg from an injury, I think the scale is going to be a little bit higher than I want yeah. it to be. So I just look at my leg and say, okay, more diuretics, and then get rid of the water. But um, 215, 220, I can't seem to get below 215 and look decent. Yeah. I came out of the hospital, 197. Well, how tall I used to be 6'5", but now yeah. I'm 5'6". <laughs> I'm 5'11". I'm just 5'8". Yeah. Uh, uh, so you're just 5'8"? Yeah. Don't feel bad about it. 
<laughs> no, no, I'm no, sorry. No, seriously, Richard, it's okay. <laughs> because I'll tell you why. Things are always looking up. 5'8", <laughs> but I have goals up there. And yeah. you go out with tall women, you have to want someone to look up to. There you go. You know, And then you always have shorter people around, you always look down at them and tell them. So, um, you know, I used to keep my weight about 190 because I, I felt, you know, my arms were bigger and I yeah. just felt bigger. But my waist was also bigger. And I, and I don't, if my waist gets near 32 or 34, I go, oh, I freak oh, no. out and I got to get it back down. Oh, I keep mine down yeah. 26 yeah. all the time. <laughs> around 26, halfway around. <laughs> you know, um, when mm -hmm. I was wrestling and I was in good shape and I competed and I didn't like competing because I wanted to make money. So I made money in the ring. The trophies didn't do anything for me. But some of the wrestling promoters would say, Rick, you got to gain weight, man. You look like a bodybuilder. I said, that's a bad thing. <laughs> Is that bad? Because the people come out to see that. He said, yeah. oh, you want to look like a wrestler. You need to put a lot of size. You got to get heavy. I said, I don't want to get heavy like those guys out there. I wrestle those guys. They look like shit. Yeah. They look like big marshmallows. He didn't like that. But I said, I don't want to be like that. <coughs> well, now more of them look like bodybuilders, don't they? Nowadays, they do. Yeah. But we're yeah. going back to the 50s and 60s yeah. and 70s. Yeah. When it was a different world. Today, everybody looks the same like they came out of a cookie cutter mold, you know. They're all bodybuilders, they're all trained the same way, they're like a car's made out of the plant, they all get in the ring and do the same thing. There's no uh, difference between any of them. They have the same routine, the same move, the same finish. Back in those days, it was completely different. You didn't know what was going to happen. You didn't know this wrestler where he came from because there was no internet. He could have come from South Carolina, he could have come from Canuck, Alaska, or parts unknown, but you scared the hell out of you because you never saw him before and he beat somebody up. He said, oh my God, that guy's brutal. So today it's a different world. Yeah. And bodybuilding today, when I look around, I'm sure you do too, the guys today, they're like completely different than our day. I don't want to really criticize them too oh, much, I do. but it looks like a bunch of fat guys on drugs is what it looks like to it me. Looks like it's elephants. endomorphs instead of mesomorphs, and it's, there's, no, there's no art to it, I don't think, like there used to be. You don't have poses <coughs> like Rees or, or Dickerson or Banu. There's or no vacuums. Zane. There's no yeah. vacuums. Yeah. 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 I have a vacuum out there I'm going to sell because it just sits there and collects dust. <laughs> but, uh, You're going to get with one of those um, guys? <laughs> I see them in the gym, you know, you know, they, it's, what they do is a lot of work to get like that, and there's a lot of other stuff they do to get like that, but I don't want to be like that, they can't even move, and people say, oh, you're going to be muscular, you can't move, and I would never say that, but when I see that, it's 300 pounds, it's like out of, out of the question, and it's definitely not healthy. Well, that's why I retired from bodybuilding, too, they, they were trying to get me into the pro uh, universe in Australia, but I, they, everybody was starting to take uh, growth hormone and yeah. insulin stuff, so I'm, so I'm not doing that. So I'm I taking growth hormone right now, Well, <laughs> and I'll tell you why. Okay. You want to know? Yeah. Ask me. Why are you taking growth hormone? Well, let me tell you why I'm taking growth hormone Rick, right my friend, Rick, what? give me the secret. What's I have a, a number of bottles in, in my pantry here, and a friend of mine at the gym had torn um, Dan Fine. I don't know if you know Dan Fine. Tore his quad. He said, I went on the GH to one year or two I used four days a week, and he says, I'm starting to heal up really fast. And I did this when I tore my quads, and my doctor says, that's not going to help, and I heal up in half the time. So the growth hormone actually goes and rebuild the tissue and rebuild the cells. Now, someone says, do stem cell. Well, stem cell is not covered by insurance, and I can't afford it. It's very, very expensive, and there's no guarantee. The GH is there. I'm taking it, and actually, I feel a little bit better. That and testosterone, which I take now because my body doesn't do what it used to do. And I think it's okay. I mean, I'm not trying to get huge. I just want to heal up. Yeah. You know, this it's all it is. And but you're probably not taking the doses they do. Oh, no, not even close. That's what I'm talking about. No, yeah. one or two I use a day compared to like 10 to 20 a day these guys yeah. do. Yeah. And, a, and a one cc of testosterone a week compared to like 30 or 40 cc's a week these other guys do. But, you know, you, we've seen it all around us, the, of the guys getting really huge and taking a lot of stuff, having a heart attack, and they die. I mean, many of them in the past year. It's not worth it. I mean, yeah. it's not worth it before what, just to be big? You know, it's not just not yeah. worth it. I'd rather look lean, mean, and sexy in this. <laughs> That's what gets there the chicks anyway, brother. So, um, you, uh, your arm routine, you gave me a video, which I want to put on here, because you were working arms pretty hard. Biceps. Pretty, he pretty heavy. Not as much as that, not as heavy as I used to do, but I still... How much weight was that dumbbell? Uh, I knew when I was doing 60 to 90, but for... Uh... <laughs> yeah. Wake me up. I've been trying to drop that lately, not going over 40 or 50. I don't know how you can do that. Yeah. When I was 18, I was doing 65s, and then I was in like my 20s, I'd do 50s, 55s, 45s of Arnold. <coughs> and recently, I dropped down to 20s because I can't lift it. It's just too heavy for me. And I think the reason being is when you get away from lifting that kind of weight, your body just goes back to this way. It says, okay, that's fine, we'll do that. Yeah. But the results are similar, just I just can't go that heavy. And I ripped a tricep, so that's the difference there. And, um, well, you can get the same results with less rep, a few more. Uh, reps. I mean, with less weight, a few more reps, and really focusing on the mind muscle the, contraction, yeah, making every every yeah. rep count for, yeah. Yeah, up and down. No, because you're. I was watching everything you were doing. I really want people to see what you did because it was very impressive, and it maintains the arms really well. Yeah, I've been happy so far. You should be. You know why? 
Right. Because you're sitting next to me. That's right. <laughs> sitting next to a legend. <laughs> no, I don't know about that. <laughs> no, I'm a legend in my own mind. Um, so what's your plans for the future that you retire? Are you going to spend more time doing what? I, I plan my retirement really well. I set aside a bunch of money for travel, so well, I can go wherever I want. So I've been coming out to California. I went to Savannah, Georgia. I go to St. Louis. I, yeah. I've been to visit my son in uh, Durango, Colorado. He's right he's, here. Yeah, where he's finishing his... Uh, yeah. Uh, Old you 12? Engineering degree. <laughs> 26. You're 26? And then, yeah. What was that wrong? And then he's, uh, uh, and then uh, I went to Germany, Munich, Germany and stuff. And yeah. Thinking about going to the Czech Republic next uh, September. So I'm doing a lot of traveling uh, when I want. You got, the money, then I got, you got money left? Yeah, yeah. I set aside enough for a while. And then I, and then I uh, read books a lot. Mm -hmm. And I even wrote a paper. Uh, I'm very, I was a classics major. So I'm still interested in that stuff. Yeah. So I wrote a paper on European tragedy and, and wrote an abstract and sent it off to a classics convention and I delivered it at the University of New Mexico at a classics convention in uh, April. So I'm having fun doing what I want to do. That's awesome. Yeah. Man. That's where it should be. I used to get a lot of flack from people saying that I always do what I want to do since I was 18. <laughs> I, seriously, I've had the same routine since I was 18. I get up, I eat, I go to the gym, I go to coffee, I have lunch, come home and work. When I lived at the beach, I did the same thing. The only difference then, I was doing commercials and auditions and wrestling at night. But I still had my mornings free and I've gone through a couple of wives and girlfriends that say, <coughs> excuse me, just it's really a sexy cough and I don't like it, <laughs> that you have life too easy. I don't have life easy. This is not easy. This takes a lot of work. Yeah. Finding sponsors, having income, having things that you sell to build an income, it takes work and it's not just handed to you. You've got to put your time in. Even at my age, I'll be 74 next week and I'm still working at it. Someone says, really, I want you to retire. I said, retire from what? I mean, I've been retired my whole life. It seems like. Yeah. But I'm still. Because you're doing what you want. I'm doing what yeah. I want to do. I never worked. I never had a job. I always just did what I wanted. Yeah, and that's what my best friend said about me not long ago. He said, you know what gets me about you? You've always done what you want to do. Yeah. Now, you can tell people that, and they say, yeah, but you can't make any money. But you know what the difference is? Is that they don't really. Let me put it this way. People say, if you want something bad enough, you can get it. Yeah. No, it's not true. You've got to really want it bad. Yeah. I say, okay, I want that Rolls Royce, but I want it really bad. Will I have it? No, not unless I want it bad enough that I'm going to make the money to buy it, and that takes a lot of work, and it's not going to happen unless I really, really want it. It's the same thing with other people. I want to do what you do. I want a life that's this. Well, you got to work at it. Well, I don't even know where to begin. I said, well, find out. Do some research yeah. and find out how I do this and what I do. Get a following. Create something for yourself. Create a past, a history, and this and that. And then take it and make it into something. And it takes a lot of work. It, it's just you got to be on all the time. And thank God at my age, my mind is still sharp and I can do this stuff. Because I have friends my age and a few years younger that, that I don't even know if they know where they're coming or going. And one guy puts his feet, his shoes on, one this way and one this way, because he doesn't <laughs> know if he's coming or going. It just, he's in every direction. But you've got to have direction. You've got to have commitment. And you got to know where you want to go. And you've got to exactly. have drive. You gotta have personality, charisma, brains, and a couple of bucks just so you can eat, <laughs> and you'll have what you want. Yeah, that was so well put, wasn't it? Yep, very philosophical. I don't know where that all came from. <laughs> yeah. My girlfriend says you talk out your tuchus. Well, maybe I do, <laughs> but at least it all makes sense to me. I'm the one that understands myself. That's all hopefully, that matters. If hopefully you guys do too. But it made sense in my life, and, and, and you know you're doing what you want. And it makes sense in your life, and you're doing what you want to do, and you're staying in great shape, and you're just flexing, flexing your pecs over there to try to get my attention. And, um, or, the, or the girls in the, in the video camera. <laughs> yeah, 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 they're all watching. Well, thank you so much for coming here today. It's good to finally meet you. Oh, I'm Gosh. so happy you yeah. have no idea. I'm sorry that I was a little under the weather, but uh, it's 101 outside there, you guys. And I've had this little bug that God knows where I picked it up. And, you know, people used to say, my mom used to say, where did you get that cold, Rick? I said, well, I don't know, Mom. Maybe I should hunt it down and find the person and step on them like a cockroach. <laughs> How do you know you get a cold? I could have got a touch in the escalator, in the elevator, at the gym, you know, at the water fountain. We don't know where we get it. All he knows is we have it. And I want to get rid of it. And as far as the leg injury, once that tendon heals up, I'll be back doing squats again. That's, that's, my, that's my sermon for today. And it makes sense to me. So, when are you, are you going back home? Yeah, tomorrow, actually. Where do you live? Yeah. Panama City, Florida. Oh, that's not, I wrestled down there. Oh, you did? I did. They're in Hollywood, Florida, too. Oh, okay. Yeah, this is back way, way back when I was working out of uh, Pensacola. Okay. I had a good time. Yeah. Well, that was fun days. I love the restaurants down there. The food was unbelievable. There's a lot of water bugs and roaches and alligators. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of that stuff. Yeah, I think a, a lady got eaten by an alligator not long ago. Yeah. Hope you liked her. <laughs> you know, I, she was um, just walking her dog, I think. 
I, someone said to me the other day, I said, I ate something that tastes really funny. She said, what was that? I said, I ate a clown the other night. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks, you guys, for watching Risk Corner. This has been one strange afternoon for me, but that's okay. I like sharing it, and it's fun to do, and hopefully you guys enjoyed Richard and it made you laugh. And, um, you sure did. Yeah. And we'll see you all next time on Rick's Corner. See you next time. Uh hey everyone, now you can have the Gold's Gym logo drawn by me, the artist Rick Drayson. Personalized and made out to you and signed by me to frame and put on your gym wall or wherever you see fit to do so. It's a piece of bodybuilding history. It will never be duplicated again. It's the largest selling icon t-shirt logo in the world. And I'm the guy that drew it and I will draw it for you. Just go to my website, rickdrayson.com, and order there. You can pay through PayPal, and it'll be sent out right away. And be sure to watch Rick's Corner for all the videos on bodybuilding, nutrition, fitness, pro wrestling, and anything that suits your interests as far as getting physically fit and being the best you can be from the golden era of bodybuilding. Baby, see you next time.